Get down, Malenia. What are you doing? Oh, crazy. Oh my god, beautiful. Where? Give me a good one, Elden Beast. No! Hello everyone, I hope you are having a fantastic day. In this video we are going to create the definitive sort of night build to get rid of every type of enemy and boss no matter if you are in the DLC or in the base game. This is probably the most requested weapon of the channel since the release of the DLC and I can see why. It is an extremely swift and devastating katana with a very dark design which I really love and it features an exceptional unique skill that will leave you speechless. The only thing that I don't like about this weapon is the stupid requirements to obtain it. For that reason guys we need to make the sort of night to be worth of the journey we took to get it. First of all, I will break down the main features of the weapon, I will address the details of the build, I'm going to test it against the toughest enemies of the DLC and the base game, and I will briefly explain how you can obtain this weapon, but be advised that you will probably need a full guide on it. So without anything further to say, let's make the night blade shine. If you don't want to farm runes or materials for your Elden Ring builds, MMOEXP is the best web service where you can easily acquire as much runes and items as you wish for the best price. Use my code CARLOSEN to get a 5% discount on your purchases. Thanks MMOEXP for sponsoring today's video. Ok guys, what we have here today is a unique katana with an amazing design and a very decent range. The moveset of this weapon is basically the same of every other katana, but the R2 attacks are the unique variation from the Serpent Bond Blade. This weapon deals physical and magic damage, but it only scales with dexterity, which makes it a little bit easier to build and use. I wouldn't focus my attention on the magic part of the weapon since it is that minimal that it's not even worth buffing it with talismans or physic tears. However, that doesn't mean it is completely useless, only it should not be considered as top priority. The best and most important part of this weapon is its unique skill Witching Arts Slash, a chargeable and unblockable triple slash that deals a huge amount of damage and that looks incredibly awesome. Besides of being really easy to use as you can decide whether to charge it or not, that makes of this katana a very versatile and vastly powerful option to take into the hardest scenarios of the DLC. And those are the main features of this weapon, now let's jump straight into the equipment and the stats. We are going to be using the Sword of Night on plus 10 and any seal we have available to cast our main boss. I am going to be using the knight set merely for aesthetical reasons, so if you have a better armor set, feel free to use it. The best talismans we can choose for this build are the Ritual Sword Talisman, the Shard of Alexander, the Roaring Winds or Insignia, and the Godfrey Icon. However, the Two-Handed Sword Talisman is a great alternative as well. And even if you can boost your magic damage a little bit with the Magic Scorpion Charm, I don't think it's worth the extra damage you will be taking. So your best two options are the Roaring Winds or Insignia and the Two-Handed Sword Talisman. They are very different talismans, but they perform pretty much the same. However, because of my aggressive playstyle, the Rodding Winds or Insignia is a better option for me. In our Flask of Wondrous Physic, we are going to use the Stone Barb Crack Tear and the Thorny Crack Tear. However, the Spike Crack Tear is very useful as well, and as a last resource, I will use the Magic Shouting Crack Tear. And this weapon consumes a decent amount of stamina, so don't forget your Pickle Torch and Legs to boost your stamina regeneration speed. The most effective stats we can use for this build are 50 on Vigor, 23 on Mind, 45 on Endurance, 99 on Dexterity, and 33 on Faith. Golden Vow and Hall of Shabridi are going to be our main buffs. And as you can see, I have my Scattery Blessing on the level 15, but you can push it all the way up to 20 to make your character even more powerful. Now that we have completed and optimized our build, what do you say if we set the night with this weapon? Ok guys, to buff your character with this build you have to use Golden Bow first, then a Pickle Torten Leg that as you know is completely optional, then your Flask of Wondrous Physic, and finally you have to use Howl of Shabriri. And with that you are ready to go! Here we go! Nice. Let's destroy her as fast as possible, baby. Like crazy. Come on. No. Nice. Let's go get her, guys. Let's get her now. It's mine. She's mine, bro. <laughs> Let's go! Is he attacking? Nice, he's coming. Oh my god. I always had, had, have to bait this guy, bro. He's very annoying. Here we go. Oh, beautiful. Beautiful, guys. Go crazy.
Oh, crazy. Oh my god, beautiful. Wow, baby. <laughs> hey there, homie. Oh my god, very close. Perfect. Amazing. Amazing. Crazy. Oh, get down, bad boy. No way, don't. No way. Oh my god. Here we go. Hey, Elden Beast, how you doing today? Crazy. Crazy. You're not going anywhere, bad boy. Anywhere. Give me a good one, Elden Beast. No! No, bro! <laughs> okay, guys, I don't know the moveset of the following boss very well, but I want to show you the potential of this build in the latest parts of the DLC. Let's go, guys. Let's go insane. How are you doing? Okay. Here we go. Ooh. Let's go. That's what I'm talking about. That is a lot of damage, guys. Let's destroy it. Let's bring destruction. Oh, the bleed. We resist it. We resist it. Come on, guys. Oh my god. I'm about to kill her, guys. No way! I'm a noob, but look at the power of this build, bro!